Hey everyone, this is Daniel. In today's video, we're going to look at the Microsoft Forms quiz enhancements. And I'm going to walk you through all of that with the demo. So check this out. I've got a demo of seven some questions in a Microsoft Forms quiz that we're going to build. And this will walk you through all of these features and functionalities. In addition, we will do all of that in a set duration of time. And that itself is a new feature. So stick around. I have a lot to cover. We have a lot to learn. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. So we come to our office365.com, click on the app launcher, and we go to Microsoft Forms. Always a good way to access all your Office 365 apps, kind of breaking the habit of putting in shortcuts, directly just go with the Office 365 app launcher. All right, so once you're over here, there's two ways to access your Microsoft Forms quiz. You either go and click on this little drop down over here, or scroll a little bit to the bottom, and then go to all my forms, and then over here, you can see all the three options. By the way, this quick import, I've done a video on that already. I've gone ahead and put the link of that in the description below. But today, our goal is the Microsoft Forms, specifically the quiz. So I'm gonna click on this quiz, and I'm gonna actually call this as a job interview questions. And this is not so much the questions that you get asked in the interview, it's questions about the interview, like what is your experience, how you should do things in the interviews, those are the type of questions I'm gonna ask. And it'll make more sense as we go along. So the first and most important thing I want to talk about is the set duration, which is by the way, a new feature. And for that, you click on this ellipsis or these three dots, you go to your settings, and this is where you see that right over here, set duration. So I'm going to click on the set duration and the default is 30 minutes. For the sake of this demo, I'm going to go and change that now to one minute. And that's the least you can do. I don't think I can for the 0.5 doesn't work. In fact, when you went and did a blank, it says only numbers from one all the way to 999 are allowed. So I'll go and do one, all right? That's the good one over here. Now, there's also a very interesting functionality. It's called shuffle the questions. That's neat because when you are going ahead and creating a exam, for example, a test that you're gonna take, shuffling those questions are always good because there are always those people, you know, who can remember, who are really good on visual learning and they tend to remember, okay, question number one, that was the answer, question number two. It's specifically for those type of people, you wanna use this shuffle questions feature um, so that it, the test gets a little bit more competitive, even for those people who have to retake it, right? So that's the one thing, shuffle questions, remember that. But now we're gonna go and start adding some questions and making some enhancements. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and this is going to be a choice type question. And there's a few things over here that I want you to focus on. First things first, let's go and add the question, all right? So the question is gonna be, how do you dress for a job interview? Very basic question. Since this is a question with you know, points, like a, a quiz, I'm just gonna go and put 10, um, 10 uh, points over here. So that's one thing. And now let's go and add our options. So the first one, I'm gonna put that as formal. And then I'm also gonna go and say the semi-formal, which is one way here. Then I'll go ahead and add another option. And in the other options, I'm gonna usually put in something as funny as this. I'm gonna say whatever I'm in the mood for that day. Highly unlikely you would do that, but I'm putting in that option. But now let's go and add some more functionalities. First of all, when I hover over the formal one, you see that this little message sanction is available over here. I click on that and this is a good place for you to add a message, basically to explain what that choice means. So in the message, I'm actually gonna put this. It's like, when in doubt, dress up formally. That's usually a good practice over here. Semi-formal, also let's go and add a message for that. I'm gonna click on this and over here it actually says, this usually means not wearing a tie, all right? That's one of the descriptions over there. So we went and added those two. Now we wanna also make this a multiple answer question. And the moment we do that, select option comes up. And when I click on the drop down over here, it's telling me how do you wanna go ahead and select the options over there. You wanna set it to no limit, you wanna equal to it or at most. So I'm gonna now go with equal to and it automatically goes ahead and does the calculation. So it knows that, hey, there are three different options, which means the max you can go is three, otherwise the default can be two, right? In this case, it's only two and three, but if we had more, it will actually go, all the default will always be two over here. Next, let's start jazzing up this a little bit. This form looks a little boring. So I'm gonna come away to my themes, and in my themes now, you've got all of these functionalities. So I'm actually gonna to go to these themes ideas and see what I can do. You know, this one really caught my attention. So I'm actually gonna go with that because it almost looks like there is a panel of judges over there. I really like this background functionality, all right? But now, I wanna add a image directly for this question because this has to do with an attire for your interview. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually now click on this one 
specifically this question, click on this image icon over here on the insert image, I'm actually going to go and search for formal interview attire. One checkbox I actually like to put is search over here. It says search results show images tagged with creative common licenses. You know, just from a legal standpoint, it's very safe to go and do that. But if you've got your own mandatory images that you absolutely have because your company is heavily regulated, you can always go and put it in OneDrive or you can go and upload that as well. You've got that functionality. So I've just typed in formal interview attire and I actually kind of like this one over here. It gives a little explanation of what you should do. This one right here. So I'm going to go and click on it. Then you got to click on add and then after that it shows up over here with a little bit of options. So I click on that pencil and now you can put it over here. This option says that hey it's going to be a smaller image. However, if you want to put it over here, it becomes a big image. So I like this functionality. In addition, as you can see that there's a magnifying glass which is zooming in. So you can zoom in, you can zoom out. You've got all of these great features. So for the sake of this one, I'm going to make it a small one. Put it on the side. It looks good. I'll just leave it at that. And this is the first question which we've gone and added with so many more features already built into it. But let's continue on. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit and I'm now going to go ahead and add a new question. I'm also going to stick with this a choice type column. All right. So in the choice type column over here, I'm going to actually go and ask this question. And the question is going to be a very simple one. I'm just doing a little copy and paste. It is what should you always do after an interview? So the first option I'm going to go and put in is this one here. Thank the interviewer. Or you can go and add this one. This is the other option. Ask about pay. I'm going to click another option and then I'm going to add this other for uh, the third one, which is ask uh, call them several times <laughs> or the last one, which sounds funny is run away. Now here again, I want to go and say which one is the correct one and which one isn't. So if you start hovering over there, you will see these dots and ellipses. That's the one that I need to actually see which one is correct. So now you actually got to select it. The moment you select that, it will automatically put all the other ones as the wrong one. That's why there is an X over there in front of it. But this is also because I have intentionally put this as a single selection. Moment you do this as a multiple selection, then that's the same one that we did on the top, which one's correct and which one is not. But in one more in thing I want to add over here is I go ahead and select the ellipses over here and make this as a shuffle option. That means the next time the person comes in, they know that, hey, the first one was the correct one. I will go and select that or the first one was wrong. So I want to make sure I don't select that one. You want to go ahead and really trick the people who take the test and therefore turn on that shuffle option. And then let's go and add an image over here as well. I'm going to click on the image. I'm going to insert an image. Make sure that I've got this checkbox over here. It remembers the search I did before. So over here, I'm going to say thank you for consideration. I'll just go and select that and we'll see what else comes up over here. See something like I'll click on that image over there, click on the ad, and then that shows up in the corner over here. Same functionality. I can click on the pencil, move things around. But see, now you're actually making your form design a little bit nicer. So that is the second thing. Now I went and added the third question as well, but there's a few things that you want to do together. First, what is the question? It says, which is something you should do at the beginning of the interview? And I've added four options over there. Shake the person's hand, tell the employer your name, smile, or all of the above. In this one, it literally is all of the above. So we're going to actually select that one. And since you've left it as a single one, because we've left, you know, the multiple answers is, is set to off, it's only going to be that one. However, we should go ahead and set that as a required one. Click on the ellipses, go ahead and put that as a shuffle option. And let's go and get an image. So in the image, I'm going to get click back over here, insert menu, insert menu, keep the checkbox. And then I've already typed in interview introduction. So in the interview introduction, I like this image selected, click on add. And then right now the image shows up over here. So this one is completed as well. So next I'm going to click on the plus add new over here. I'm going to go to the drop down and then I'm going to select ranking because this is the type of question I want to ask over here. And the question is going to be what is the proper order to introduce yourself? It's a really good question over here. All right. So the first one that I'm going to say is that introduce your full name. That's one of the first things that you should do in case if you have one of those names, which is a little difficult to pronounce or they are long names. That's a good one. Go ahead and introduce your name right off the bat. Then tell a little bit about yourself. This is always the tricky part because you want to go ahead and say your technical, you know, what is the interview you came for, but also to make it a little bit personable. So that's always a good thing that you want to go and do. Don't spend too much time telling about yourself. Go ahead and also say, why are you job searching? And then why are you the subject matter expert for that? This is the good order that we want to go and do it. But we want to use the ranking functionality. The interesting thing about the ranking functionality is that this is the list option that should be in the correct order. But if you go and hover over this section over here, it'll say that when you share the quiz, 
options will appear in random order and that order keeps changing. So I really like this functionality over here. Definitely try to go ahead and use that even especially when you're going and creating a test. But right now, let's go and change this one as well. I'm going to go and say day one, introduce yourself. Let's just make it sense over here. I like this image. So I'm going to go and select that image. I'm going to go and add it. And then this would be actually a good one for me to go and put it all the way in the bottom. And I like because the forms is a little smart. This image is kind of a horizontal wide one. So it automatically gave me that effect to put it as a full image. Now I do still have the option to go ahead and select in on the side, but I really like the experience that it already suggested. So I'm going to go with it. I like that. All right. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and already filled out the next two questions. So we don't actually spend too much time on that, but let's take a look at it anyway. So I can click on it and over here, it, the question is, should you answer interview questions in complete sentences or give a question and answer? If you've already guessed it, all I had to do was insert the new one and I went with the choice type. I did not select the multiple answers because this is the one. Yes, you should always answer with complete sentences. That is the correct answer. And then I went and marked that as required. Again, click on it and the ellipses over there, shuffle the options, go and shuffle that question. Same thing I went and did over here as well. Went ahead and added the question. I did go ahead and add a nice image, but over here we are going to make it as a multiple answer. So I'm going to select the multiple answer. And then the only two options over here is trustworthy and self-motivated because let's face it. Those are the two options that employees are looking for when they're hiring someone, somebody who can be trustworthy, somebody who can be self-motivated. And then afterwards for the select total options, click on that, set it to equal to set it to two. And then we are done over here. So let's go and take a look at that settings one more time. I'll click on the ellipses, click on settings. And over here by default option for quiz show results automatically is toggled on. We can leave that on. You can go and turn this off over here. Who can fill out this form? This is the important one, one response per person. However, if you are in one of the scenarios where people can come and take the same quiz or test five different times, then you will have to check that off because you allow one, one to allow them to do multiple tests. So keep that in mind. Then you can put a start date and end date. And the moment you select that, it gives you not just the date, but also the timestamp based on where your tenant is located. Keep that in mind. Start date, end date, great examples over here. Set duration. Remember, we went through that. We'll look at it again. You can do it from one all the way up to 999 minutes. A really, really neat functionality. Shuffle the questions. Remember, we were able to shuffle the options of the choices in a question, but here you can go ahead and shuffle the entire questions. And there's some important things over here. So when I go and click on it, it gives me some additional functionalities. It says all the questions, or do you want to only go and lock a few of them? So let's take a look at lock questions. You can go ahead and actually lock a few questions. And a great scenario for this is that if you're going ahead and taking a quiz and the first question is, give me your full name. Well, that for number one question, you want to kind of lock it and keep it on the top. So this is that scenario where you want to go ahead and use still the shuffle questions, but you want to use the lock questions functionality and lock the first one. So in this case, I'll just go ahead and select it as one one and it works. It works really great. And then after that, you've got all of these other functionalities as well. Customize. Thank you. Allow receipts of a response after the submission, email notifications of each approver, all of these functionality, which has been there for a while are available at your fingertips. All right. So now that we've gone ahead and added all the questions to the quiz, all the settings are good. Let's go ahead and do collect a response. Now, if for whatever reason, while you are making this form and you did a test, just make sure that in your responses, you do have you gone ahead and cleared everything off. Because remember, we've got the setting one response per person. So make sure you go to the response, you go and click on this ellipses over here, and then you delete all the responses. Because if you don't delete it over here, you will not be able to go ahead and actually fill out the form. In fact, every once in a while, I've even seen some errors come up over there when you're filling up the form right till the end. It doesn't tell you right off in the beginning when you're doing it in the preview, right? So just keep that in mind. So I'm coming up to collect responses over here. I'll go and copy this URL. I'll open up another tab. I'll paste it in. And the moment I do that, here is the first screen that should come up. If you're using the set time duration thing, then you should always see this. So I'm going to now click on start. And the moment I click on start right up on the top, you actually see the timer starting over there. Right? So I'm going to start going quickly over here. So how should you dress for an interview? I'm going to say formal or semi formal. What is the quality of employees looking for? I'll go and say trustworthy, self motivated. All right, I'll leave it at that one. Uh, what is the proper order to introduce yourself? I'm going to say introduce your full name. Um, you know, what is the job you're searching for? At least this is what makes sense to me. You know, what should you always do after an interview? I'm going to go and say, thank the interviewer. 
Okay, which is something you should do. And by the way, we've only got 20 seconds left over there, which is something you should do at the beginning of an interview. Um, I'm going to go and do all of the above. That looks good. Com um, should you answer interviews in complete sentences or give one word? For the sake of this, I'll just go and say one word answers. Click on submit. All right, everything is completed. We have selected the option to view the results. So I can actually click on view the results. Will be reviewed. Everything over here looks good. It actually even goes and tells me which is correct, which is not correct. Like this one over here, that was a not you know, incorrect. This is for the scenarios where you actually want to go in and tell your students or the employees immediate answers for the quiz so they can prepare for the next time. This is the great scenario to allow them to go see that. Now, if you would have gone ahead and passed that 60 seconds or that one minute, then it would have automatically ended the quiz for us. So thank you for sticking around till the end. Hopefully all of these features that I've showed you will guide you through creating a very successful quiz. And in your scenario, you can tweak it however you see fit. And as always, keep using Microsoft Forms. Hey everyone, hopefully you found this video useful. And if you did, can you help me help you? Can you subscribe to this YouTube channel? Because remember, I provide fresh content on a weekly basis and it's 100% free. So if you have subscribed, thank you so much and pass the word. But if you haven't, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.